When it comes to actually filling out forms during the checkout process, shoppers need to answer the following four questions. What am I being asked? In what form am I supposed to provide the information? Where can I locate the necessary information? Why are they asking me these questions? Let's look at each one of these in turn, starting with, what am I being asked? If you've ever tried to fill out a form and come across a question you don't understand, you know how frustrating that can be. You'd be happy to answer if you only knew what the question meant. For example, what if there's an abbreviation in the form that you're not familiar with? Abbreviations in forms can be confusing, especially to non-native speakers. Remember, shoppers can be located anywhere around the world. So why would you want to write Q, T, Y when some shoppers may not understand? It's just as easy to write the word out in long form. Another thing to look out for, besides acronyms and short forms, is the use of terminology that's only familiar to people who work in your business or who are technically inclined. For instance, people who regularly shop online will be used to supplying the security code found on the back of their credit cards. If you ask for their CSC or their CVV2, they'll be happy to supply it. However, many buyers will have no idea what you're talking about. They'll just be confused. You want to remove that moment of confusion entirely. Why not simply ask for the security code, explain where it is, and include an image? That turns a puzzling question and a moment when your customer could leave your site to an easy to answer question. To avoid customer confusion, all through your checkout process, just read through the questions one by one and ask yourself, will all my customers understand what is asked of them? If not, make the necessary changes. The second question was, in what format am I supposed to provide the info? A classic case is when a site asks for a telephone number and just provides one field. Should the shopper write the number with the country code or maybe without it? Will the phone number be rejected if it's written without spaces? Or maybe the area code was supposed to be in brackets? There are so many possibilities. It's easy to see how a shopper would get frustrated and just give up. Again, the remedy is easy. Instead of asking for just a telephone number, give an example of how you want it written. Another option is to have a separate field for the area code and a field for the number itself. Optimally, you could program the field so that it would accept and record any phone number in any form. Even so, it's helpful to provide an example so that the customer can answer confidently. This isn't only true for telephone numbers. It holds true for any other field that the shopper has to fill in, such as a password or a credit card number. If the password has to be a minimum of six characters and one has to be a digit, why not say so in the form, in the beginning, rather than letting your shopper get it wrong and only then telling them what the rules are for each and every field? For each and every field the shopper fills out, they should know the answer to the question, in what format am I supposed to provide the info? The next question is, where can I locate the necessary information? Is there a coupon code or a gift card? Why not provide an image with the coupon code circle, that credit card security code we mentioned? Provide an image showing exactly where to find it. Even better, do it without the customer having to click on anything. Whenever you ask for any sort of model number, invoice number, discount code, or anything else, let the shopper know where he or she can find it. Don't make them work hard. So we've covered the first three questions. What am I being asked? In what format am I supposed to provide the info? And where can I locate the necessary information? That takes us to the last thing shoppers will want to know. Why are they asking me these questions? There's a famous line in The Simpsons where Homer says, a talking moose wants my credit card number? That's only fair. While Homer may be happy to give the credit card number to most anyone, most shoppers aren't quite as eager to do so. And they may be reluctant to provide not only a credit card number, but also their date of birth or phone number. It arouses suspicion. A feeling of insecurity and suspicion is not what you're trying to go after. Just the opposite. It's hugely important that any e-commerce website creates in the shopper a feeling of trust. While this is true for every page of your website, nowhere is it more important than when your customers are asked to pull out their credit cards. Think about it. When you go to a store and have a problem, you know how to get back to the physical location and take care of it. But shopping on the internet seems like a riskier prospect. What if the site just disappears with my money? There are lots of things you can do throughout the checkout process to create an aura of trust. One of them is answering question number four. What are they asking me these questions for? All throughout the checkout process, I'll show you what I mean. 
This is taken from the checkout page of a company that sells prescription glasses. They ask for the customer's date of birth and their doctor's phone number. Shoppers look upon their date of birth as personal information and don't like to share. In this case, however, it doesn't arouse suspicion because they explain why they need the data. Research shows that shoppers are willing to provide the information as long as there's an explanation why the info is needed. Here's another example. This site not only explains why they're asking for email addresses and phone number, they also state that they will never share the information with anyone. Again, this goes a long way to building trust. In this site, they don't let customers wonder about shipping and tax. They state that it will be calculated during checkout. Any customer concerns you can answer along the way, before the shopper starts to worry about them, will help make checkout process simple and painless, and that leads to increased sales. So what else builds trust? Transparency. The customer wants to know that there are real people behind your website. They especially need to know this if you're running a small company, one that's unfamiliar to them. That means writing a physical address on the site provides an accurate information. And it also means granting access to customer service. Finally, there's a shortcut that significantly increases trust, and that's trust seals. What are they? They are these familiar images of Norton, McAfee, and others you see on e-commerce sites. What do they actually signify? Well, in some cases, website owners pay for the right to use the seal, but they don't actually do anything at all. It's sort of like putting a beware of dog sign in front of your house when you have no dog. It gives a feeling of being in a secure system. In other cases, website owners do buy an extra layer of security from the company. Either way, these symbols do create a feeling of trust for the shopper. These are the seals the customers reported give them the sense of security. Norton is the most popular. How many seals do customers like to see? Research shows that three trust seals are optimal. The process of creating a smooth checkout is not one of adding great features. It's going over the process with a fine tooth comb and removing anything that could be a barrier to making a sale. All this is done to create a seamless, predictable, and safe checkout experience for your shopper. You want them to move from step to step to step with no hiccups along the way. Good luck. Oh, yeah,